So, okay, let me do this and the next two question. They look like they should be, um, uh, I guess, kinetic theory of gas uh, questions. So it's uh, giving you some information about escape velocity um, connected to Earth. This is something you might have covered in physics 4A, depending on your instructor. I know I don't cover it. So you, you are given some velocity, let me, some sort of reference of velocity. Let me just label that, I don't know, V naught. It asks, uh, at what temperature would the oxygen molecules with some mass, okay, I guess that's somehow important, have an RMS velocity equal to Earth's escape velocity? Okay. <laughs> I guess the toughest thing here is to realize this is, um, one, it connects to the kinetic theory of gas, and one particular thing that it connects to is what we call equipartition theorem which gives you the relationship between the macroscopic uh, quantities that you might measure, like a temperature, with uh, mechanical quantities, like a kinetic energy that you might measure. And out of this theorem, one result that you have is that average kinetic energy of a particle molecule in a gaseous collection is equal to, it's related to temperature. And it's a three halves, um, well, average translational kinetic energy <laughs> is equal to uh, three halves uh, Boltzmann constant times the temperature of that sample. And this uh, average kinetic energy, you can express it this way. You can express it as one half times mass times, and this is the where averaging has been done, V RMS squared. The RMS stands for root mean squared and uh, it's uh, meant to take be taken like in opposite order <laughs> in the sense that you square it first you know you take the velocities square them and then mean you average it and then you take square root so when you square it you are actually undoing the root so what you have here is the average of the squared values of the velocities that's how you get the average kinetic energy so uh, so this is the one equation that contains the one number that they are uh, asking for, temperature, and I think everything else you know, because for VRMS, I'm going to use the escape velocity that I've been given. So let me solve this expression for temperature. Temperature is equal to, I'm gonna just, <laughs> in the interest of time, just do it in my head, just double check it for yourself later, uh, mass of the particle times VRMS squared, divided by three times the Boltzmann constant. Okay, I did it correctly. Uh, let me just plug everything in. Uh, mass, 32.0 uh, atomic mass unit. I hope Wolfram Alpha understands that fine. Times the, the speed that we are using, 11.2 kilometers per second squared divided by three times the Boltzmann constant. Now, if you're using any other regular dumb calculator, you should not be doing what I'm doing. <laughs> you should be converting this to kilograms. You should be converting this to meters per second. You should be looking up the constant. Uh, I can do what I do because Wolfram Alpha is a smart calculator. It'll uh, do the unit conversions for me. So it'll understand I uh, asked in particular unit for the mass and a particular unit for the velocity, particular constant, it'll do the conversion for me. And um, wow, that is a high number. Um, all right, let's hope that's correct. I, I think it is because, you know, Earth holds oxygen molecules to the surface. So the, obviously at Earth temperature, oxygen molecules don't have escape velocity. So uh, not, now let's uh, redo the calculation for helium atoms. So Earth doesn't quite, Earth isn't able to hold on to helium atoms. They escape Earth over time. So I'm expecting my number to now become sim closer to the temperature of the Earth. So 4.003 AMU. Everything else remains the same. This is another advantage of using Wolfram Alpha. Um, you don't have to retype a lot of stuff if you've typed it in before. So with that, I get, oh, that's still pretty high. 20,130, 1,130, that's a comma, not a dot.
Yeah. So you one might wonder why doesn't Earth have any helium atoms? <laughs> It's a, I guess so. If you read the textbook, is that a hint? Maybe. Uh, if you look at the textbook, um, there's a Maxwell Boltzmann distribution of velocities. So this VR mass, that's the average. But when you look at the distribution at a given temperature, there are ones at the high or higher velocities. So um, those ones will escape. So over time, Earth leaks helium. So um, now if Earth was this hot, then, you know, helium would instantly evaporate. And in fact, we'll probably use quite a bit of oxygen molecules as well over time. <laughs> But um, yeah, this is uh, some kind of a number sense question. Doesn't quite illustrate what I was hoping it would illustrate. Let me look at the next question. Um, and I think uh, some of the formulas I've written down, I can still use. So it's asking, um, it's giving me information about nuclear fusion, don't care. <laughs> it's a useful background, it's, a, I mean, it's interesting background, but it's not necessary or useful for answering the question. What's useful and necessary is the atoms in your fusion to have average, uh, average kinetic energy grade. We are being given an average kinetic energy directly, and we are being asked for the temperature. Okay, so I need to take this uh, expression, so let me erase this. This time, I need to take this expression, this equality, and solve that for temperature. And when I do that, temperature is equal to uh, two times the average kinetic energy divided by three times a Boltzmann constant. And this is really the basis on which I say Boltzmann constant is an arbitrary constant that we have because we didn't have sense to define kinet uh, the temperature as a in terms of, you know, average kinetic energy of the air molecules. <laughs> Because um, if we did, we could just skip Boltzmann constant altogether. All this Boltzmann constant does is it converts the joules to Kelvin. So with that, uh, let me plug in the numbers. Um, two times the average kinetic energy, 6.5 times 10 to the power of minus 14 joule divided by three times Boltzmann constant. So we did that, understood that correctly, yeah, in Kelvin, so okay, 10 to the 9, same power of 10, so I put in 3.139, yeah, like 3 billion Kelvin. Um, I guess that's right. Um, so in the core of the sun, billions of Kelvin, that's probably right, I think. Um, definitely millions and hundreds of millions of Kelvin. A billion might be a little bit too high for our sun, I think. Um, Anyways, so that's uh, the second question in the set. 